Man, I feel so invigorated. I feel like it's the early hours of New Year's Day. I just put on a fresh pair of my favorite underwear. So, back in February, I talked about Yoshikage Kira. Thanks, Mom. And I made a wager that if you guys were able to give that video 10k likes, I'd talk about Josuke Higashikata and how he's a bit of a messy protagonist in his own part. And lo and behold, we got those 10k likes. But before we go any further, I want to point out that I do like Josuke as a character, and I will also point out some positives too in this video, because while I do think Josuke wasn't used greatly as a protagonist in his own part, Josuke is my favorite Jojo. So it pains me to say this, but part four did him dirty. Hi, I'm Manga Common, and be careful not to insult people's hair while we watch this video. Oh, and spoilers for Jojo part four and possibly other parts. I don't know, I'm just being careful here. For the love of God, drop the meat! Now I'm about 90% sure that most of you watching this video know exactly who Josuke Higashikata is. I mean, it's JoJo, and you're watching a JoJo video. So if you want to skip to the next section, I do not blame you in the slightest. That is what chapters are for. But for the rest of you people, allow me to give you a little explanation. Josuke Higashikata is the main JoJo lead for JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Diamond is Unbreakable, the fourth part in the series. He is the son of Joseph Joestar. After he essentially cheated on his wife, I fucked your mom, shit lips was born and raised in the town of Morio, a fictional place in Japan which, fun fact, is modeled after the Jojo creator Araki's own hometown. He is also the uncle to Jotaro Kujo, which, you know, is an interesting aspect to have a nephew who's older than you. Josuke's stand ability is Crazy Diamond, a close-range stand who has the ability of restoration. Basically, he can restore anything, repair damage, revert chemical changes, or fuse things together. He can't use the power on himself, though. So while Josuke can heal others, he cannot heal himself. He's a younger man in high school, but much like a lot of Araki's protagonists, they have the bodies of bodybuilders and can kick a ton of ass. Although, interesting enough, this was the generation of Jojo that did start to break that trend. Josuke is more of an actual teenager character. He enjoys video games, he goes to school, oh, and deals with the supernatural. Typical stuff, you know, especially for anime. For Tix, Josuke has at least two notable ones. The first is anyone who messes with his friends and family, he'll kick your ass. And if you talk smack about his hair... It's not pretty. I should also point out that Josuke was Araki's favorite Jojo, at least since Steel Ball Run, citing that he felt more attached to Josuke and considered him more like somewhat of a friend or a senior due to the small town atmosphere of Diamond is Unbreakable, and I can totally see that. I do like how Part 4 is probably one of the more down-to-earth and laid-back parts of Jojo, arguably. I've also found Josuke to be a very bright individual. If you look at a lot of Jojo characters, only he and Jolene don't go through a power-up or a training montage to become stronger. Rather, they have to rely on their ingenuity and how they can use their own powers. Since this video is dedicated to Josuke, let's keep it on him. Duh. Josuke's power is really quite impressive and flexible, as he's able to really work with that. Whether it be restoring an enemy's weapons to use against them, merge an enemy with something, using the power to track someone or rearrange someone's face, I really enjoy his power, and its limitation where he can't heal himself is actually pretty good. I think he's got a good balanced ability and one that has a lot of creativity that can be used with it. Josuke is not a perfect character though. A lot of issues come down to his inexperience, like how he was nervous with dealing with bug eaten due to not being used to long range attacks with ammo like BBs and bullets. Or his obvious anger issues with some exceptions. Affable. Or wasn't that pincushion on your head in fashion like- Do get him in trouble. Also, he's young, but that's not a means of slamming the youth of today. Rather, he's a 16 year old kid who's being thrown into several odd situations, and sometimes his youthful demeanor and lack of experience are a detriment. For the love of God, drop the meat! And hey, unlike, say, Jotaro when he has his own adventure, Josuke tends to be a bit more realistic with his reactions. What I mean is, he comes out as more of an actual person than, say, a stoic badass, which I'm not saying is bad. I prefer to have my characters have their moments of weakness, and sometimes their reaction to crazy events is the best way to go about it. However, since I managed to give you guys a bit of an idea who Josuke is, I think we should dive right into the reasoning as to why I feel like Josuke was hurt as a protagonist in his own series.
unlike a lot of YouTubers are probably going to waste your time to inflate their watch time and make you guys wait, I'm going to go straight to the biggest issue. Josuke is supposed to be the main character of part 4, but to me, he really comes off as more of a side character in his own part. I say this for a few reasons. Josuke doesn't get a lot of development, he doesn't defeat the major antagonist of the part, at least not alone. Or if you really want to be cynical, it was the ambulance that did the finishing blow. And he gets pushed off to the side of the plot. And if you're a fan of JoJo and have felt this way, you know exactly where this is going. But before we get to that, we do need to point something out. And that's Josuke's role. He is an everyman. Josuke isn't a deep character, and neither is motivations. Like how Part 4 is, Josuke is a grounded character. Or if you prefer, he's a straight man. Part 4 is more about the full cast of characters. For example, Jotaro Kujo acts like the experienced powerhouse, Okuyasu is the comedic character, Koichi acts as a window into the crazy world of Jodu from a more normal perspective, and Josuke? Well, like I said, he's the straight man. I mean, the straight man as you can be in the world Jojo. Josuke doesn't really have that many grand ambitions, and in all honesty, in say comparison to part 3 where there's a definitive race against the clock to save Jotaro's mother with a very narrow window of time, part 4 doesn't really have that. Now that isn't to say that there isn't actually any hurry to find Yoshikage Kira, but there wasn't a well-defined window of time for there to be a racing clock, at least when it came to Josuke. Part 4 is more of a quiet tale of a small town, and the relatability of a setting and character does have its mass appeal. I say this in comparison to the other Jojos that we follow. Jonathan, Joseph, Jotaro, Giorno, Jolene, Johnny, and Gappy. They tend to have a bit more larger than life qualities to them. Now this is a double-edged sword. On one hand, you have Josuke being a more believable character. Indecisive about who he's going to be, but he has his heart in the right place since he's motivated to help the ones he cares about in his life. He does have inconsistencies, but that's to be expected from a literal teenage character. He's also a bit more passive than the other Jojos. Let's do a quick comparison to Josuke and Giorno in that regard. I picked Giorno since there seems to be a good portion of people who find it really hard to relate to the character and I think that stems from his ambitions in maturity. He's 15 years old. I can appreciate the drive to become a high-ranking mafioso, but the issue stems that it just makes it all the harder to relate to the character in that regard when you consider the context of who the character is. Granted, that is just my perspective. Now back to the double-edged sword on the other side because you have Josuke being less ambitious than the other Jojos as well as not being so out of this world if that's the right phrase to use here. Because of this, in part 4 we get a much more expanded side cast that gets a lot more of the limelight while pushing Josuke off to the side. Now depending on who you are, you can probably say that this is a good thing or a bad thing. While Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is a fun read, I'd be lying if it's one of the bigger weaknesses are the character writing. Characters do not need to change over the course of a story, however, since the journey can be the focus of entertainment with the characters acting on a stage. It really all depends on if you're looking for a more fun time, a deep character dive, or anything in between. To me, while I do appreciate the creativity of Josuke, my biggest issue is that he isn't really all that fleshed out after a certain point. I believe it has to do with that more laid-back vibes of the story, but there's another couple of factors that I do believe need to be considered. Frankly, if we were to look at part 4 with a character development and plot investment points in view, then the characters that would get that would be Koichi and Rohan respectively. We see Koichi grow from being a wimpy kid, and after he gets shot in the neck by the arrow and gets his stand, we watch him go through various trials, growing and maturing, reflected by how his stand changes throughout the story, ending with the series outright having Jotaro, a man who managed to punch a vampire Stan's legs so hard that it caused his head to explode, to express he's proud of meeting Koichi. Rohan, on the other hand, has a direct connection with the murders that have been played plaguing Morio, with Reimi Sugimoto being not only his neighbor, but also the person who saved him when he was four years old from Yoshikage Kira when he was performing his first murder. As such, he has a lot more motivation to find the killer who's been operating ever since then, especially when he meets Raimi's ghost to tell him the tale. I'm not saying that Josuke doesn't have a connection or a reason to help aid in finding the serial murderer who that is. Yoshikage Kira. However, Josuke's motivation and development stem back all the way to the beginning of part 4 when he loses his grandfather to another criminal, Angelo. At that point, he makes a vow to protect Morio in place of his policeman grandfather. It should also be noted that the reason that Josuke is more fired up for this is because that it was his fault that his grandfather got killed due to his negligence to keep an eye on Angelo's stand, who he had captured at the time in a bottle. I'm not saying that this is bad. I honestly really like this sort of thing where you can expand on the side cast of a show, but to me, it shouldn't be a detriment to the main character's development. And I know what I'm about to do is sacrilegious in the view of JoJo videos, but I'm talking about Ruby. Ugh. 
For the longest time, one of the issues I had was that the main character didn't get any development. And I don't want to say that's the same thing here because it's JoJo versus Ruby. I honestly think JoJo has a leg up here. But I am saying that this is something that reminds me of that. Okay, back to JoJo. I'd also like to say that Josuke really doesn't feel like the main hero either, especially in regards to facing off the major villain of the part, Yoshikage Kira. If you watched my video about Kira, which if you haven't, what the hell are you doing here? If you did watch it, you know that I pointed out there were quite a few comparisons between Josuke and Kira. How the designs, and their abilities, and even their personalities were like mixing water and oil together. And that would be amazing to have two enemies that are so diametrically opposed in so many ways to clash. It's akin to seeing Virgil fight against Dante from Devil May Cry. You just know it's going to be a fun fight. And it is with Josuke versus Kira, and considering how creative both parties were in their attempts to defeat each other, it's probably one of my favorite fights. Which I don't say lightly, since a lot of fights in JoJo tend to be a bit more on the strategy side of things than anything else. However, ugh, look, I kind of got a big deal of Josuke not being the one to actually land the final blow against Kira. Jotaro does. Hell, if it isn't really Josuke who finds Kira the first time, it's Jotaro and Koichi. I wouldn't have an issue with this though, if Josuke and Kira weren't essentially complete opposites to each other and had the makings for a great confrontation between them, but were only really regulated to one actual confrontation between the two, and I'm not counting the after effect of the Jotaro vs. Kira fight, but it's Jotaro who saves the day with Star Platinum, the world, in the finale. I mean, it, though, if you want to get technical, it was actually the ambulance that saved the day. Once I kill you with my unstoppable killer queen, I'm gonna have the, the best and most peaceful life ever. And don't get me wrong, thematically, I can see Kira getting run over by the ambulance to be a beautiful thing of irony. Kira being killed by a random accident stands in contrast to the careful and organized nature of his life. Even his obsession with how he was blessed by luck and fate is thrown in the mix there. And yet, when the ambulance hits him, Kira himself is not immune from the randomness and chaos of life. No matter how careful he tries to be or how powerful or successful he feels, there's always going to be an ambulance to kill him! That is amazing, and I appreciate that writing, and I'm saying this to make it clear that this isn't an issue. Rather, it feels as though the torch was never really passed to Josuke as a Jojo. What do I mean by this? Well, consider this. Jotaro shows up in Morio to find his young uncle, Josuke. He acts as a bit of a mentor to Josuke in the beginning of the part, giving Josuke the basics about stands and even helping him catch Angelo, even acting as backup to make sure that Josuke doesn't get killed by Angelo either. Then we get to the bug eaten battle, where we see Josuke getting some training from Jotaro, mentoring the young uncle. And while we see that Josuke is being an average teenager, I could have sworn you said we were going hunting. If that's true, does that mean we're going hunting for hotties with hot bodies? Cause you should know I'm a little more the romantic type. I'm not sure I'll be able to pull it off. You'll have to show me the ropes. Ultimately, he managed to pull through and kill the murderous Rodin. It was one of the few times where we actually see the two Jojos work together and when Jotaro was a mentor to Josuke. I mean, unless you want to count like, say a cool line. Bam! If I really had to get to my point, Jotaro really does a lot of the heavy lifting for the crew of Part 4. I understand that there is the argument that they're kids, so it makes sense for an adult to deal with this sort of stuff. I don't really have a good counter to that other than to say that perhaps that could have been more of a team effort, especially with the unusual uncle and nephew bond that Josuke and Jotaro have. It's an odd family dynamic that isn't really all that common. Or maybe it is, I'm not gonna look it up. I think there was something like that in King of the Hill. I feel like there should have been a similar dynamic with how Jotaro and Joseph were in part 3. Like with how Joseph being the older folk who was looking out for Jotaro and while obviously still having his own strengths, then outshine the main Jojo in that part. To me, Jotaro should have been more of a setup character for Josuke, since a lot of the time Josuke was more reactive to the main plot of part 4, especially when it came to searching for Kira. Heck, the only reason why Josuke was even able to get to fight Kira was because of Hayato calling Josuke to remind him not to be late. There's nothing wrong with being passive in the story, but my issue is that it's more to the fact that in comparison to other characters like Rohan who was able to get clues to get a lead to find Kira, or Koichi and Jotaro who had the first actual real fight against Kira, it kinda irks me from a writing perspective. I'm not saying that Josuke needed to be on Jotaro's level, nor do I think he needed to be the perfect problem solver. Hell, I don't even think he needed an upgrade either. What I think to say is that he should have been at the very least to be able to find a way to search for Kira. 
Hell, a plausible way to do that would be to get Yuya Fungami to actually sniff out Kira. His nose was capable of tracking Koichi and Josuke's mother during the Enigma fight, and the crew does have access to Kira's belongings since they were able to enter his house. Have Yuya sniff his underwear or something, and then just have him go after Kira. Even if it wasn't fruitful, and maybe I'm an idiot for not noticing that there's an actual explained reason why Yuya couldn't help, I'd still accept that Josuke was being proactive in the search, even if he gave me a bullshit reason as to why Yuya couldn't track Kira. It's not like Josuke is completely shoved out of the spotlight. He still has a lot of amazing moments in his own part, but it was still Jotaro who did a lot of the caring for the actual plot. Hell, when you compare Josuke to Koichi, a guy who is technically a secondary character, Koichi's the narrator, has the most defined character arc, actually gets to evolve his stand and personality, gets a girlfriend, probably the worst choice for a girlfriend, but my point still stands, and technically speaking, before Jotaro uses the world, Koichi manages to be the one to stop Kira to allow Jotaro to defeat Kira. And as I said before, Jotaro praises Koichi and says it was great to meet him, but not Josuke. It really makes me feel like Josuke's in Koichi's shadow, and that's not just him, but other characters too. And I find that to be kind of annoying, especially since Josuke is obviously a character that I do enjoy watching. Why? Oh, because he's horrible! What? Now, hold on. Before you leave, please hear me out. On my channel, we've talked about a lot of unlikable characters, and I've made it clear that you can have characters who are flawed in and of their own right. They can be horrible people, but they still gotta have something good to them. One of Josuke's biggest flaws that I find entertaining is that he's a con man. There are a number of times where Josuke will try to do things in order to get some cash, and he's not above using his stand in dubious ways to do so. But here's the thing, a lot of his cons don't usually get people hurt. Uh, most of the time. Then again, I'd argue that it actually plays in the charm that is of part 4. It makes me really actually relate to Josuke, because a lot of us when we were teens were trying to make a little extra money to spend on things that we really didn't need, even going so far as to do it in the way that wasn't so legitimate. But what also covers that flaw is that Josuke has more positive elements to him that can be endearing or fun, and like I said before, you still need to have positives to latch onto, and Josuke sure does. Hell, take for example his hair and how he was inspired by a man who saved him so much that he styled his hair in that man's honor, and can even be considered that Josuke's stand took influence to help others by healing them in that regard. Josuke tends to be one of the more forgiving of the JoJo's. Hell, he even become allies with some of his enemies, or even friends in the case of Okuyasu, Shigechi, I'd say Rohan, but Rohan hates Josuke's guts so it's hard to say that there. But the point is, there are things to like about Josuke despite his flaws. However, in that regard, there are small things that, you know, aside from the stuff I've said before, kind of just fades away from Josuke's character. Take for example, Josuke's fear of turtles. It really only shows up in the first appearance of Josuke, and it really isn't touched upon either once we get past the initial introduction. Josuke is known for his rage with his hair, but around the time Rohan does insult him and gets his ass beat, the whole bit kind of just faded away. Same with Josuke saying, Goreto! It was like going to be Josuke's own English catchphrase akin to that of Jotaro's Yare Yare Daze. But again, it just kind of disappears. I bring this up because a lot of these seem to be character traits that were established for Josuke, but were ultimately dropped. It could be because Araki wanted to introduce Josuke as his own character, and hey, that's fine, but it really takes away from the character, especially with the aforementioned section when I talk about Josuke being put in the shadows, and these traits just disappear. I just feel as though Josuke should have been more expressive in his own part. But here's the thing that really does hurt Josuke's character, and part 4 as a whole, and that's the cast. Not that the cast is bad, for the most part, but that the cast has a lot of characters to it and some of them are just kind of superfluous. It kind of reminds me of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX when they got to season 3 and introduced a ton of characters that basically pushed away a good chunk of the main and original cast. And while that's not the exact same thing that happened in part 4, there are a lot of characters who really didn't do anything for the plot or were just one-offs at a time. They essentially become stylized background characters that get more lines than the average anons. And at that point, it actually hurts Josuke's character because there's gonna be limited screen time and page time. I don't know what to really say at this point, but I just feel that the amount of characters was a detriment not only to Josuke, but also part 4 as a whole.
Look, despite what the video may lead you to think, I like Josuke. I like part four. I'm not gonna say it's perfect. Hell, there are a few things that outright kind of piss me off. And while I wouldn't say that Josuke is a terrible main character by a long shot, trust me, that is something I would never say about the character. I really wouldn't have a hard time saying that he got stiffed out being the main character, and I wouldn't blame anyone who finds him to be boring. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below, and if you can't think of a comment, put in the comment, what'd you say about my hair? And as a little challenge, if this video gets about 10k likes, I'll talk about JoJo again in the future video. Now, what would the topic be about? Well, how about a little thing called redemption? The good, the bad, the absolute worst, and ugh. But until next time, my friends, I'm Manga Common, and enjoy your crazy, noisy, bizarre towns. Later. Later.